There's no shortage of tools and choices for producing high quality music and audio with Linux. Switching to Linux as a musician or producer is easier now than ever. If you've considered making the switch to Linux from your proprietary platform, but you're not completely sold on the idea yet, consider the fact that Linux has powerful modular audio routing capabilities and a nearly endless selection of casual and professional tools for manipulating and recording and processing sound and audio. Linux-powered studios have made the switch for the flexibility, freedom from uncertainty of proprietary formats, and the enterprise-grade stability associated with Linux. In this video series, we'll lay out, starting from scratch, with free and open source tools for beginners. We'll discuss the use case and advantages of custom patched real-time and low latency kernels. We'll show you how Windows and Mac users can continue using most of their favorite VST instrument and effects plugins that they rely on from their current production workflows. We'll also showcase the many digital audio workstations available for Linux, including the cross-platform DAWs like Reaper, Bitwig Studio, Renoise, and Mixbus made by the famous Harrison consoles. We'll then look at pre-configured Linux distros that are specifically designed for audio production, such as KX Studio, AV Linux, and Ubuntu Studio, allowing you to minimize the learning curve and get right to work making music. Hello and welcome, or welcome back to the DS Tech Media Guide to Recording and Producing Music and Audio with Linux Part 2. I'm Jay, and this is my channel, DS Tech Media. And in part one, we basically laid out everything that I plan to cover in this guide and listed all the important items and definitions to Linux audio. I covered the three Linux audio systems, also Pulse Audio and Jack. And most importantly, we listed the most important apps and packages you need, and I showed you how to set up and configure Jack using QJack control. So in part two, we're going to be looking at three Linux distros pre-built for music and audio work. They come pre-packaged with tools and configurations that are ideal for producing and recording and they make it easier for you to get moving and also make it easier to learn as you go. And those three distros are KX Studio, Ubuntu Studio, and AV or Audio Video Linux. So first off, let's look at KX Studio. Uh, the project's based on Ubuntu and I want to mention right away that the KX Studio distro itself is currently based on Ubuntu 14.04 and is thus severely outdated but you could still use it and try it out and it, you'll be lacking some newer features and also possibly some important uh, security and kernel updates so yeah, it's based on Ubuntu and it was created and is maintained by Falk TX, also known as Felipe Coelho. Uh, 
uh, Falk TX is a major developer in Linux audio and open source audio production communities. He's responsible for the cross-platform Carla plugin host, which is very popular and allows running Windows VST plugins on Linux. He also created the Cadence control system for Linux, and it integrates the audio production management tools and settings in a centralized control system. He developed the Distro plugin framework for porting and developing cross-platform plugins, and he also maintains the Distro collection of native and ported plugins for Linux. KX Studio basically combines all those projects and some more in a custom distribution based on the now deprecated Ubuntu 14.04. The distro itself is no longer maintained or provided on the KX website, but you can still find it elsewhere and it will still work for most people. The KX Studio project still provides up-to-date repositories of the software packages and plugins which can be added to Ubuntu 18.04 and Debian 10 based distributions. So up next is Ubuntu Studio and it is an official flavor meaning it follows the Ubuntu release cycle. It claims to be the most popular Linux distro for media production. It comes with the low latency patch kernel as well as the standard Linux kernel and it features stable versions of the best open source audio tools like Ardor, Audacity, Qtractor, Hydrogen, and Yashimi. There is also uh, AV Linux which is uh, based on Debian Stable and it is a distro created by Glenn MacArthur. He's a musician and a producer, and he runs the Band Shed Records, and he records music under his band Rated Blue. As a musician, he began uh, using Linux for audio production in 2006, and he eventually developed AV Linux for his own needs in his studio. And he decided to make his custom Linux distribution available to others and that's how we got AV Linux which offers a ton of unique aspects out of the box that aren't found in KX Studio or Ubuntu Studio. Of the three distros that I'm covering it's the only one that features the real-time patched preemptive kernel for optimal low latency audio potential. So here we have the KX Studio uh, official website which is kx.studio and it's a collection of applications plugins for audio production also provides Debian and Ubuntu compatible repositories divided into three main sections applications, plugins, and repositories we go to the applications this shows everything that is included as far as for actually producing music and audio and these are mostly like supplemental tools for getting jack pulse audio and also working together and also for controlling the entire recording process. And there's also things like Carla, which is a, a host for your VST plugins. And this is the distro plugins framework and the distro ports plugins, which are included with KX Studio. So we've got DSSI VST, which is a bridge for hosting uh, Windows plugins. There's Fluid Plug, 
which use the sound fonts as LV2 plugins via Fluid Synth. And there is also Jack S, which is a VST plugin that provides Jack MIDI support for VST hosts and LV2 extensions. And then of course there are the repositories and this shows you how you can quickly add the KX Studio repositories to a Debian or Ubuntu system. And here we have Ubuntu Studio. They're currently offering version 19.10 and 20.04, but I actually have only ever tried 18.04. This shows you everything audio related. So it comes with jack set up by default. You get Ardor out of the box. Carla, which was also in KX Studio. It comes with Audacity, Q-Tractor, Hydrogen, and Yoshimi Audacity is an audio wave editor. Q-Tractor is a doll with MIDI. Hydrogen is a specifically drum machine and sequencer, and Yoshimi is a software sequencer. It comes with Rackarack pre-installed and Guitarix, which are two popular guitar amp simulators and tools for audio programming. The official website for AV Linux can be found at bandshed.net. And if you click menu, you can see they have AV Linux and AVL drum kits. There's also a sounds FTP server where you can get some other resources. Bridge for and AV Linux originates from 32-bit and 64-bit snapshots of Debian Stable. Has the custom real-time preamp kernel for optimum low latency audio potential. CPU governor is set to performance by default. Extra tweaks for performance meets all criteria including the real-time configuration quick scan. And it also comes with some special custom packaging not found in any of the default repositories. Fast and light XFCE4 desktop environment with attractive customizations. This comes with FalcTX's KX Studio repositories for up to date applications. Extensive audio video and administrator friendly custom actions, seamless jack audio and MIDI environment with pulse audio integration, robust environment for developers, blah blah blah, blah. Mozilla builds of Firefox and Thunderbird. And they have a link to the manual. And no matter what distro you are using, you can always come here to grab the AVL drum kits, which are available as hydrogen kits, sound fonts, and LV2 plugins. So here we are inside of KX Studio, and this is based on Ubuntu 1404 LTS Trusty Tar. It is no longer in support, meaning it's completely out of date, it does not even receive security updates. You can still add the KX Studio repositories to a Ubuntu or Debian install like Ubuntu 16 or 18 and get the up-to-date packages that are included in those repositories. KX Studio is using KDE4, which is pre-plasma, and the low latency enhanced kernel. And this is Cadence, which is the central controller for Jack, Alsa, and Pulse Audio. It allows you to easily get them to work together. Sort of is a alternative to QJack control. And you have a whole bunch of settings here. A lot of these are the same settings that you'll find in QJack control. It has built-in support for Firewire. And I'm going to start the also MIDI bridge as well as I have my Akai MPK MIDI controller routed into VMware to work with this VM. 
And now we're going to open up Claudia. And Claudia breaks everything up into DAWs, VST hosts, other instruments. The Bristol VST instrument emulator, which is, I don't think comes pre-installed in any other audio distro. Uh, these are the various plugins. We got all of the CAF plugins. There's probably about 200 plugins listed here. Under effects, they have Guitarix, Jammin, and Rackarack. Guitarix and Rackarack are guitar amplifier plugins. And then they have additional tools such as Audacity, Cadence, Cadence XY controller, Katja, which is a patch bay, instrument editor, a virtual jack keyboard, all the meter bridge analyzers mix is a dj interface non-mixer is a part of the uh, non sweet humidity arpeggiator and xjdo is a video player so under dolls we've got giada hydrogen lmms muse the non-sequencer the non-timeline q tractor rose garden and SEQ24. I don't know why it's not listed with the other DAWs, but our door is included as well. So let's start up Carla. What Carla is showing us here is all of our jack input output connections. This USB device is my MIDI controller. The Ensonic Audio PCI is VMware's audio card. And if we go over here to Bristol, we can run this synthesizer. And now the synthesizer also appears. Go ahead and run those out and run my MIDI in. And we can actually change all these different settings on the virtual keyboard. Go ahead and show you another one. And these are all modeled after usually uh, famous synthesizers or organs. And uh, the version of LMMS in this is pretty outdated, but you still get the basic functionality. One thing that is missing is 
It does not have the built-in host for plugins. Like my main Ubuntu install has the Vestige plugin, which is a built-in Windows VST host. And it also comes with a built-in Carla Rack and Carla Patch Bay. But with this, we we still have Carla to run plugins through. So it doesn't matter. You still get the same functionality. course with Carla you've got a whole set of instrument plugins built in that you can route out to anything that records audio so you can use Carla without a doll. So earlier I referred to this as Claudia, but this is actually Claudia Launcher. Claudia itself is an entirely different application. Claudia is a laddish front end or a jack session manager. And what that means is we can open up various different uh, applications and plugins and route everything together through here and then we can save that as a studio and then subsequently as project and then we can open up that session or that studio at another time and have all of our configuration back to the way we had them before and this is a very useful feature of Linux audio. There's also another key uh, function is the transport option and anything that is jack transport capable such as the hydrogen drum machine can be synced up to a master transport application such as Claudia. So here I have a relatively intricate Laddish studio setup. I have the CAF plugin host running uh, AM synth. the uh, 
hydrogen uh, drum machine open with a quickly thrown together beat and I have jack transport enabled and I also have very simple sequence set up in the non sequencer so now when I hit start it will all start in unison and I could easily have another program of my choosing for recording and when I hit that play button it would instantly run all of the programs in Unis and then I could simply save the studio and come back to it at any time with all of these connections already ready to go this is an awesome piece of software this is called super looper it's a very very useful looper and it does just about everything you could possibly want it to it has tons of inputs including midi The KX Studio site contains a basic guide for setting up a Lattice Studio. It also has a guide for getting the Windows version of Reaper working with Wine ASIO. I think it's kind of dated since there is now a Linux version of Reaper available. Here is the Mix DJ uh, software. This is the non-mixer, which is a completely modular software mixer where you can literally add as many uh, channels and strips as you want and mix everything together here. Uh, the Qsynth uh, sound font player. Here we have Guitarix, which is a guitar effects amp plugin host and like I said before KX Studio is not currently being updated as the distro itself however the repositories that you can add to Debian or Ubuntu are still being updated regularly on May 11th they released Carla 2.1.1 so if you wanted to jump right in KX Studio is still a pretty great place to start, but I don't think I could recommend it as a daily driver for doing other things. It's fine for music work, but not sure if I'd want to use it as my main operating system since it's so out of date. And when you can add the repositories to even, say, Ubuntu Studio. Okay, so here we have the install screen for Ubuntu Studio 1804 and they give you a list of repositories with packages for specific things so we've got audio, audio core, audio plugins basically what distinguishes Ubuntu Studio from any other Ubuntu installs so under audio we've got our door got the audio core which has also to jack midi d also tools g laddish there's the jack keyboard jack rack jack tools the jack d there's a jack bridge for routing audio from also to jack pipe organ emulator these are all plugins and they have them pre-set up but it's important to know that you can install these on any Ubuntu or Ubuntu-based distribution. 
you simply have to add these repositories. Okay, so here we are installing Ubuntu Studio 2004 as a VM. It's a rather large install compared to standard Ubuntu. Uh, this ISO is 3.3 gigs in size, and they give you a nice little introduction from recording an album, podcast, editing, or scoring a film. Ubuntu Studio includes applications and documents workflows to support your audio needs, included software, Ardor doll, Jack Sound Server, Ladspa, and LV2 plugins. Here we are in the Ubuntu Studio 2004 desktop. It uses the very configurable and up-to-date XFCE desktop environment running the low latency Linux kernel 5.4.0.42 specifically the low latency Ubuntu symmetric multiprocessing preemptive kernel and at the center we have Ubuntu studio controls it has two main tabs. There is a CPU governor with on-demand and performance. You can enable or disable Intel Boost and you can set it up for different log leveling. And then under audio setup, we have a system that's somewhat similar to Claudia Launcher for KX Studio. It basically tries to take all of the functionality of QJack control and the various bridging systems puts them in one convenient place so that this tab would be our QJack control settings you know pick our jack master device and it has a USB master device set up your jack periods, your jack backend, buffer size, and your sample rate. And there's also this extra devices tab, which I don't fully understand. Connect other internal audio interfaces. I guess this is like a way of adding a uh, slave device to jack, and then it allows you to bridge USB devices to jack when plugged in. And then the third tab is pulse bridging and it lets you set up an input and an output bridge and you can add different channels pulse in and out and down here you've got start restart stop apply audio settings go ahead and start it you can also open a uh, pulse audio volume control right from here it's a nice addition and you can open the qas mixer which, as far as I can tell, is just a fancier front end for uh, also Mixer. And you can also open Carla. It uses the very configurable... Uh, when it comes to Carla and the actual plugins available, we've got 27 included internal and 552 LV2 plugin. And I just want to compare that really quickly with KX Studio, which has 37 internal and 636 LV2 plugin. It's not a huge deal, but when it comes strictly to instruments, I think KX Studio has uh, a few that are not available in Ubuntu Studio. Helm, Fabla, Sorcerer, Dext, OBXD, Cars, and Vex. Set be free, uh, the Noisemaker. I think that might be it. And that's versus Ubuntu Studios. Also has some that are not included. Ubuntu Studio has Yoshimi, which is built out of the Zin add sub effects, and for whatever reason, they don't have Zin add sub effects as a plug in instrument, but it is included as a standalone instrument. Uh, these uh, LSP multi samplers are not in KX Studio, and this Foo organ is also not found in Ubuntu Studio.
Under uh, the audio production tab, we've got uh, Zeta Auto Tune, and it also comes with Jammin Mastering Tool for Jack. Basically, lets you do mastering work on all of your Jack connections. Of course, there's LMMS. This is version 1.2.1. Still missing the Vestige and Carla plugins though. The various, but I just did. We've got, and the VST server is. We have uh, Ardor 5, Audacity. But Audacity is a very loved tool among linux audio production and basically you can set up just different tracks and it is jack transport capable so using this and other standalone tools routed into it this could be your uh, tracking and recording part of your own modular DAW configuration it even supports Latspa lv2 Nyquist, Vamp, and VST effects. You can give it a dark look, which I think is a lot better. I'm not a huge fan of the appearance of it. And it also includes its own plugins. It's got a bunch of them. It's got some great noise reduction, auto ducking, things like that. Hydrogen is also included. The Zeta Reverb a Race Session is a jack session manager or remembering all of your jack setups so you can have it run any of your various plugins or standalone applications and it will also save the way you've connected them all we've got the guitarix mono amplifier simulator hexter which is yamaha dx7 modeling dssi plugin Petrofu sound sampler, phase harmonic advanced synthesis experiment, basically a synthesizer, super looper, uh, rack a rack guitar effects, got the Q tractor, the Q synthesizer, Q MIDI ARP, uh, Q jack control, sample V1, drum KV, Q MIDI route, Q MIDI net, muse score for sheet music. Uh, we have an also interface for the NV24 sound cards. We've got controls for the RME Hammerfall DSP sound cards. Controls for the Hammerfall HDSP also settings. Controls for the advanced routing features of the Hammerfall. We've got control for Echo Audio sound cards. Mm -hmm. We have a software mixer for Firewire audio devices. HDA jack retask is a hardware uh, pin interface connector for managing Intel sound cards usually built in. We have control for the RME Digi32 and RME Digi96 sound card. So not quite the same tool set as KX Studio. A lot of uh, shared stuff. Uh, Ubuntu Studio has got its own stuff that comes pre-installed that you'd have to go out and find with KX Studio, but in general, uh, Ubuntu Studio is going to make a better daily driver because it's up to date, it's a lot more modern looking, and you can always go out and get more plugins and more DAWs and other tools as well. Okay, so real quick, I want to take a look at specific packages that are installed uh, this is synaptic package manager and i did a search for carla and it comes back with four carla packages installed carla lv2 carla vst and to get the most out of carla we definitely want to have these other packages installed so i want to mark carla bridge linux carla bridge linux 64 those are 32 and 64 bit 
the Carla windows, 32 and 64 bridges. And those are also going to mark some wine dependencies. And I'm pretty sure the reason that these aren't included is licensing or something of that nature. Also want to make sure that I have this LMMS BST server installed just to see if I can get that to show up in LMMS. Okay, so with those packages installed, Carlos should be able to run uh, more types of plugins from uh, Windows. And I've also brought over a few of my plugins from my host folder. All of your Windows VST plugins should go in your home folder in the folder marked dot VST. That means it's hidden. If you can't see it, you may need to go to view, show hidden files. It's not there. You can just go ahead and make it and place your VST.dlls in there. And unfortunately, installing the LMS VST server did not add my missing uh, plugins, but that's not a problem. The recommended way to use LMMS is to go to LMMS.io and download it from there. And that will give you a app image file and that app image file does contain the missing Carla patch bay and rack and vestige plugins and this is the one that I use on my main setup let's go ahead and run one of these wine dependencies these aren't included Could always just run this in Carla directly. If you use LMMS, it's convenient to have. And if you want to add some more plugins or instruments to Ubuntu Studio, you can go to Synaptic and type in AM synth and you will be able to get the AM synth synthesizer. This is one of my favorite open source plugins. You already have the drum gizmo plugin and you can go to drumgizmo.org and download kits from there. And last but not least, we can go to kx.studio, the KX Studio website, and follow these instructions to add the KX Studio repositories. And for your plugins, check uh, all of them. Once you have KX Studios, you can come back to Synaptic, and if we type in VST, we can install Dext, the distro plugin ports and ports VST, DPF plugins, Drow Audio plugins, Helm, Juice plugins, ST. OBXD is the synthesizer, Lufticus, Tau plugins, VST, Vamp, Whooper Tinger. Then we can go back to Carla, go into the Carla configuration, and make sure you have Windows and Wine bridging enabled. And then when you scan for your plugins, check uh, all of them. Oh, and I almost forgot. In its default configuration, when you go to refresh or add plugins, the available tools will only be the Carla Discovery Native and Python 3, whatever that is. So in order to get the rest of the plugins to become available, we need to go to configure, to main, 
and we need to enable experimental features and then go down to the experimental tab enable bridges wine bridges and after that when we go to scan we'll have POSIX 32, Win32, and Win64 available. Then we can go back to Carla and we'll have a whole lot more instruments. So now we have Dext. We now have Vext, or Vex, which is a favorite of mine. Of course you can bring your own, but adding the KX Studio repositories will give you a head start on having extra packages. When we started, I think we had around 600. Now we have 27 internal, 383 LADSPA, 10 DSSI, 568 LV2, and 232 VST2. And finally with Ubuntu Studio, I'd like to direct you to ubuntustudio.org at the support tab if you go to documentation under getting help. They have a trove of resources here. They have a pro audio intro, some hardware support information, a guide specifically to using Ubuntu Studio controls, and they also have this audio handbook it's available here on the site and also as a PDF or EPUB download, and it contains some useful stuff. It's even got 
some gear on a budget recommendations goes through setting up your jack control and lots of other things so that is something i wanted to make sure to plug and we've saved the best for last av linux is probably my personal favorite this is the studio distro that I decided to go with when I began working with uh, music production. I think it offers the most unique features of the distros. And I just want to show you this real quick. Uh, here we are at fanshed.net slash avlinux. So you should go to the avlinux page and down here under read all about it they have the 2020 user manual much like the ubuntu studio handbook and user manual there's a trove of knowledge here but most importantly it shows you the username and password and root password for av linux the default username is always iso tester iso tester and the password is avl 64 or 32 depending on whether you're using 32 or 64 bit and avl 64 admin or avl 32 admin is the root password and root password and here i am running a live session in the vm was gonna do a physical install on another machine and capture it but I figured keeping everything consistent, I'd test it the same way as I did the last two distros and also guide you through the somewhat unique installation process. So before we go any further, I'm going to stress the fact that AV Linux is based on Debian and not Ubuntu. And this means that instead of using sudo as uh, Ubuntu distros do, it uses the traditional Debian super user or su. And when setting it up, you do have to create a separate unique root user. And I'm also going to be following the manual's instructions for setting up an install. So if you're having trouble following along, the AV Linux manual is going to be the best place for you to go. First thing is we're gonna have to manually partition. So we want gparted. And I'm going to be doing this according to a modern or UEFI computer. Chances are if your computer is relatively new, this is what you're gonna wanna do as well. And you're not going to want to install this alongside Windows. So we're going to create a GPT partition table. And we're going to need a new partition. This needs to be a FAT32. And then we're going to be creating the primary partition where the system will be installed. That's extension 4. And however large you want your Linux swap file to be, that is how much space needs to follow. So you want to leave that. And then with what's left there, you're going to want to mark that as swap. And then we're going to go ahead and apply. Then we want to go to that first partition, manage flags. And we want to mark that boot and it'll automatically select ESP. And we should be done with gparted. We're going to start the installation by searching for system back. And we're going to go to system install and how to do these sorts of things. But I figured remember to set the unique root password. And that first partition you want to mark as boot EFI is the new mount point. The second or main one should just be root. And of course, the last one should be swap. And we're ready to go. And the reason why I installed AV Linux on its own machine when I got started with it was simply for the fact that I didn't feel comfortable installing it alongside even another Linux distro. I wanted it on its own hard drive with its own partition. That way I could just remove the possibility of losing any of my data or messing anything up entirely. I was still pretty new to Linux at the time. Prior to AV Linux, had never really tried a Debian 
distro and had never done any type of manual installation before. But I learned a lot from it and felt it was important enough that I could not leave it out of this guide. And if everything went well, you should have the system install is completed. And now all we have to do is reboot. So I've discovered that since AV Linux 2004, the real-time kernel is no longer the default. However, you can still install it yourself. Let's open uh, Synaptic Package Manager and do a search for Linux RT. The real-time kernel is not compatible with a third-party graphics drivers. So if you rely on NVIDIA or AMD GPU Pro, you might not want to use this. And we want to install Linux Image 5.4.28-RTAVL 1 or 2 and the Linux headers as well. And you can install any of these versions. I'm going with the version that corresponds with the low latency kernel that's included by default. Now when we boot up, we want to go to Advanced Options for Debian GNU and go down and select the RT19AVL2 kernel. And here we are running the real-time kernel. And here, as you can see, my kernel is Linux 5.4.28-RT for real-time 19. And it is symmetric multiprocessing preemptive real time. This is the AV Linux Assistant. The uh, system editor tab allows you to edit grub options, change the default governor on the CPU, you can edit the real time IRQ properties, add scripts or kernel modules to the boot process. It also has this apt assistant or apt assistant as a easy way to edit your apt sources so we've got the debian buster debian unstable repositories got the Lickrix optional kernels the av linux kernels and then winehq.org and f audio you can clean and refresh the app package lists and cache and we've got apt upgrade app distribution upgrade show all the packages that are on hold got a handful of packages that they already have on hold and you can also release them uh, customize has a few quick settings for system locale time zone system font keyboard and console and here we have the miscellaneous page enable or disable running scripts at boot enable automatic mount partitions disable mount partitions disable touchpad you can kill a program that's not responding and you can kill all jack d and jack d bus processes configure wine staging and they also have the wine tricks wine extensions for working with uh, windows software the main thing i wanted to show you in this list is run real-time performance processing and it checks if your root checks the file system no a time parameter cpu governors which is the only thing that I failed. I think that has to do with running it inside of a VM. Checks your swappiness, how aggressively we swap out memory. Basically just does all of these checks to make sure that you're in an optimum environment for running real-time configuration. And of course, the AV Linux user manual is included. There is a lot of good information here. This is pretty much essential reading. And here we have a uh, QJack control. But one thing to note, if you go to options, comes pre-configured with PA Jack Connect and also to Jack MIDI D. Runs both of those right in when you start it. And then it turns PA Jack Connect off if you were to stop Jack. And it also does a PA Jack Connect reset when you shut down AV Linux. System edit. We go to multimedia. So we've got CAF, Carla, Firewire, Fado, Audio Mixer, Guitarix, Helm, Polyphone, Sound Font Editor, Q Sampler, Set B Free Software Synthesizer, the Shuriken 
Beat Slicer. Oh, I'm gonna show you that in a moment. Satala is a nice and simple uh, drum sampler. Comes with uh, Spotify. We have Yoshimi Zen Ed sub effects for Alsa and for Jack. As far as our dolls go, Hydrogen, which we've showcased a couple times already, our door, and very unique to AV Linux. Harrison Mixbus 32C, which is in the uh, demo mode, and it costs about, I think, $90 to unlock the full mode. And demo mode is fully capable. The only issue is plays static at a short interval. Let's go ahead and look at Satala. We've only got one uh, factory kit installed, and that's a clean 808. on the main or miss and we can uh basically just edit and create our own drum kits based on the original all right now i want to show you shuriken shuriken is a very very fun tool getting uh this program installed on other distros can be sort of a pain i had to build it myself on ubuntu and let's go ahead and import our sample. This allows you to slice a song or sample into various slices. You can set your time signature to bars or beats, give it a length, and then you calculate and it estimates the BPM and it can search for onsets or beats by broadband energy, high frequency content, complex domain, phase based, spectral difference, callback labeler, modified callback labeler, and spectral flux. Click find and it will lay all this out for us and then we can just go ahead and slice. And it also has a MIDI input It also has a global time stretch. Uh, you can change your attack and release envelope. Now I apply the time stretch. Okay, so now we simply must look at Carla. And I know we've looked at Carla many times already. And it's important to note that just like with KX Studio, you need to enable the experimental features and then go to experimental and enable the plugin bridges and wine bridges. And then do a rescan of all of your plugins and you'll find that you have far more than when you started. So I have 42 internal, 283 LADSPA, 9 DSSI, 783 LV2, 515 VST2, and 0 VST3 or sound kits. And let's go to instruments. So we have Zen Add sub effects. Uh, of course, this was in every distro we've looked at. But this is the modern interface. We have uh, Odin 2, which is another modular synth.
called X-Hip. And of course the Black Pearl and Red Zeppelin uh, drum kits are available on just about every distro. And these are made by the developer of AV Linux. And this is called Collab. Pretty realistic sounding organ though. It's even got stops. And aside from just the wide variety of instruments, there's also a large assortment of different effects processors. This is a uh, Graylion 2 from Auburn Sounds. It's a pitch shifter and auto tuner. And I would demo it, but I am not going to be singing. So another feature of AV Linux is in the Thunar file manager and no not the file manager itself but some modifications that they have made to the file manager. If you go to the right click menu we've got some extra options here such as you can create a soft link you can get media info and it brings up a little program called media info and it'll show you the origins and metadata for a particular um, media file if you are working with drum samples and want to create a hydrogen drum machine drum kit they have an option for doing that if you were trying to create a sound font fsfz sound library there is an option for that there's also a sox wave splitter and an audio file conversion tool so they literally have just about everything here i don't even know half of these uh formats there's 3g2 3gp 8svx aac ac3 adts i mean everything flac fssd hcom i mean there's got to be at least 50 or 60 right there and under file there are some more here we've got a uh, sox sample trimmer a sox semitone pitch drop sox whole tone pitch drop sox stereo to mono concatenate for mp4 and mkv and they've got some samba uh, options here you can share read only share read and write and unshare i know it might seem pretty minor but you know it's all about the little things part of what makes using linux special moving on so every distro I've looked at thus far has included our door and I've purposely left it out 
And the reason for that is I figured it would be best to show it alongside Mixbus. So Harrison Mixbus has been included in the older versions of AV Linux, but the AV Linux 2020 edition includes Harrison Mixbus 32C, which is the premium version. It also includes all of the uh, Harrison plugins. It is a demo, meaning every uh, so many minutes in an interval, it plays some static noise, rendering it pretty much unusable for any real production work. And of course, you have to buy a license to get rid of that. Also, every time you open it, it opens Firefox and takes you to the Harrison website. And a uh, mix bus standard is $89. 32C is $349. And Mixbus and Ardor share the same code base. I believe uh, Steve Harris is the developer and engineer that works on both of them. And everything that goes into Ardor will end up in Mixbus but not everything from Mixbus ends up in our door. Mixbus has its own built-in uh, digital signal processing that gives it more of a recorded to tape feel as Harrison consoles. Their main product has always been studio uh, console gears, you know, the giant mixing and recording boards. Uh, these are the Harrison plugins they themselves are quite pricey uh, 29 49 29 49 29 29 29 pretty pricey they also sell the x42 packs but let's go ahead and look at harrison mixbus 32c and it has its own plugin hosting capabilities ironically uh, i believe ardor technically supports more than a mix bus does or more types of plugins rather there's the plugin manager most of these are lv2 and there's a few lua as well and all of these are the harrison consoles they're mostly various uh, effects processing type stuff let's see we got micro guide xtsp stunning phaser gverb mastering equalizer standard equalizer vocal character expander so both Ardor and Mixbus are broken up into two main windows. You have the editor window and the mixer window. And Mixbus 32C comes with, I believe, a total of 12 buses versus the four less that you get when you're using standard mix bus each bus and track comes preloaded with an eq a comp and a fader that's your your chain right there and all of those are controlled right down here and you can adjust the gain and the speed of the compressor you can turn the compressor on and off and you have a left and right balance for everything this is your master bus here you can also group everything I can highlight these so that they become visible. These are all buses. These are my tracks. If I click on this MIDI track, the uh, channel I'm working with changes. And I'm using the CAF Fluid Synth with the uh, general user sound font. I think I have it set to Honky Tonk Grand Piano. And if you're working with larger projects, this little tool down here at the bottom allows you to change your view of all your tracks. So here we have a MIDI track and the piano roll becomes visible as you drag it down. And you can move your visibility up and down the roll and you can also expand the roll or diminish it. And you're able to uh, draw in your notes and there's a uh, wide variety of tools and options here you also have a pretty intricate way of setting ranges and markers mm -hmm. 
Also, the equalizer has a lot more features, I believe, the one that comes built in with 32C. This is the XT 3D Triple Delay. This is one of the uh, Mixbus specific plugins that costs like 30 or 50 bucks. Uh, this is one of the factory templates for, it's called Jazz Backing Band. And it's set up so that you have separate channels for everything and they also have it set up so that you have your drums in one group your bass in another organ and two pianos and then of course vocals and if we go to the mixer over here these are your group buses if you wanted to add effects to the entire groups so looks like they already have a reverb on the drums and G-verb on the vocals and these are the individual tracks and they even have set B free already loaded in here so that's pretty cool that you can just start off with instruments and this is the uh, connection setup you can literally do entire chains of effects and side chains and everything else without ever having to actually leave the doll and most of this is also true of Ardor at their core they are essentially the same Mixbus has some added features and visually Mixbus has more of its own style they are both pretty complex and meant to be basically like a competition to Pro Tools. In fact, I've even read several articles about why you should be ditching Pro Tools for Mixbus. Uh, one of the main reasons was that it was only $89. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into our door. Go ahead and open up the Ardor plugin manager and we go over to type. We have the uh, Ladspa Linux plugins, the LV2s, and the Linux uh, VST. And of course, we can always run Carla as its own plugin and then we can run our Wine powered Windows VSTs. So technically, our door is going to see more of your plugins out of the box than Mixbus does, but Mixbus has its own extra plugins. Of course, those are all going to cost you. And as you can see, it's all virtually the same. I have these all kind of pre-set up. The uh, basic track would only have a fader. It's not going to have the compressor and the other stop in the chain. Other than that, they are, for the most part, very much the same. Another thing I really like about our door, besides the fact that it's 100% free and pretty awesome, we can go to preferences and we can come down to appearance. We can change the uh, we can draw 
have flat buttons, do LED meter style. You can also uh, change the depth of the color gradient for the waveforms. And it also comes with its own pre-configured themes. And you can, of course, manually adjust them as well. And in Mixbus, you don't have the pre-configured themes. All you have is the option to change each color by hand. It also has comprehensive automation features. And they're both all around great dolls. Obviously, uh, I've spent more time in our door because if you want to actually save your work, that's the only way to go unless you want to pay the $89 or $350 price tag for the Mixbus offerings. With the ability to create complex chains, buses, and VCA buses is about as close to pro-grade doll as I can think of honestly and you really can't beat free uh, you can do scripting with Lua if you're that savvy with the Lua scripting language and they both work with Pulsa Advanced Linux Sound Architecture or Jack I don't think they work with Pulse Audio but I could be wrong about that Ardor has less pre-configured templates you've got the advanced session recording session and live band I'll go ahead and demo that and I guess it lets you pick all of your instruments and you can set them to stereo or whatever let's go ahead and load that up I created more tracks than there were physical inputs on the sound card it said I've never actually gotten that message before this is a uh, app for wine ASIO it launches the wine asynchronous input output drivers which are like the jack drivers for Windows, basically. And you can choose 64 32-bit. And this will actually expose, if you're running, say, Reaper or another Windows program that requires the uh, Windows ASIO drivers, this will send those to jack, but mimic as if you were running Windows ASIO. And I think that concludes AV Linux. And that should wrap up part two of my guide to Linux music production. I am sorry it took so long to put this out, but there's been a lot of things that have happened uh, since I began this project. And to be honest, it felt like I bit off a little more than I could chew. I hopefully will have part three done in much sooner time. I'm also going to be releasing my notes as a pdf i'm gonna edit them obviously i'll be releasing that uh, in markdown pdf format and it'll have all my notes in a language that's readable by general users and i also plan on having time codes in the description of this video and i'll be retroactively adding them to the previous part one in part three we're going to be looking at all of the dolls available for uh, linux bitwig studio lmms ardor uh, traction renoise and some other ones as well and i'm gonna probably try and dig into some other multifunctional programs i also plan on doing one that's just about the more advanced things like getting uh, wine software running for music production so please do subscribe and if you like this leave a thumbs up if you are in any music groups or anything like that that pertains to Linux, please uh, share this. The channel is growing slowly but surely. I was really excited about all of the response I got on part one of this guide, so I felt especially bad about taking so long to put this one out. And if you made it this far, I know that this is a long video, and I hope that it being so long means that it's especially helpful. I thank you for watching. Signing out, I'm Jay, and this is DS Tech Media, and I will see you in the next one.